Okay, here we are, Paradise Now Church, Brisbane. It's the 31st today. No, it's not. It's the 13th. I think people. Everyone's going, whoa. 13th of the 2nd, 2022. The year of spew, where the Lord will vomit many out. We see them falling out, don't we? They're falling out everywhere. And, uh, but we've got to hang in there. Amen. So we've got to stay in the Word. We have to stay in the Word all the time because the Word is the lamp to the feet and a light to the path. So you're doing your short trips and your long trips, right? your sprints and your marathons. The Word is with us. Glory to the Lamb. What's going on around us? Um, Afghanistani uh, immigrant went crazy down in Brisbane City with a knife, stabbing a stranger and his girlfriend, and then he ran. And they said, well, it's not a terrorist act, but this guy's not a terrorist, but he's a mentally sick person. The old, the old mentally sick card, 99. You know, <laughs> he's a mentally sick person, even though, but wait, we've got a demtel on the end here, but there's more. Even though he is registered uh, on the Muslim terrorist list, so the police had to shoot him dead. Hey? I shot the sheriff, but I did not shoot the deputy. Hey? Oh dear. As Ned Kelly would say, but not me, such is life. Uh, the Bahrain Highway, swamped with locust plagues. Well, these are signs galore, aren't they? Not barbecues galore, signs galore. Coronavirus has claimed tens of millions, no, billions, tens of billions on the stock market. While well, Queensland superannuation shares have plummeted. So sometimes they like to say all these you know, nice things, as some people would call it positive. You know, they use the old battery, battery terminal talk. <laughs> you know, the old positive and negative. You know. Hold it right there, please, hold it. Taxi's not here yet, I'm out of here. It's not positive and negative. With the people of the Lord, because if you can find the word positive and negative in the Bible, I'll give you a hundred bucks cash, and you can hold me to that. Just find me it written once, positive or negative. No, it's faith or fear. It's one or the other. It's truth or lies. You know, sometimes you might think that the truth is negative. It negatives, negatives. It's not negative. The truth is the truth. The truth will set you free on application, of course. The truth won't set you free. The truth will set you free on application. You know? It's sort of like the, um, you know, the Band-Aid's useless. I cut myself the other day. No, I'm not a self-harmer, but <laughs> I cut myself the other day uh, when I was doing a little job and uh, bled like a pig, you know. And Brother Shadrach gave me a Band-Aid. So he could have stood there with the packet of Band-Aids and I could have just kept bleeding, you know. But he gave me the Band-Aid, or better still, he applied it to my finger and the bleeding stopped. You get it now? Yes, everyone said yes. <laughs> so we've got to apply the word. It's not good enough just to hear the word or, or to get excited about the word. We have to apply it, you know? <clears throat> and that will tax us terribly, more than the, a lot more than the um, uh, GTS or anything else. It will really tax you. It taxed me severely. Back in the day, 
when I was starting off, only a babe in Christ. Had to let go of my image and everything else that I had, and believe me, it was only an image uh, of the beast. <laughs> it was the mark of the beast for sure. But uh, I had to answer myself of that and just say, Right, O Lord, be Lord. And uh, yeah, so he does things his way. We don't do his thing our way. That's a, like saying, you know, I'm going to walk on the narrow road, but I'll be on the wide road. But I am walking on the narrow road, but I'm over here on the wide road. <laughs> you know, it's the old once saved, always saved Baptist. Oh, it's not me doing it, you know, it's sin doing it. You know, it's sin doing it in me. It's not, it's not really me doing it. Okay. Well, my Bible says that there is decisions to be made and the warrior prophet Joshua said, you choose today who you will have as your Lord. You choose. Who you will have as your Lord. Joshua uh, 24, 15. You choose who will be Lord over you. Amen? Amen. Whether you're going to be Lord or someone else is going to be Lord. But if you're Lord, you can be sure the devil is Lord in your life. Because you're Lord. That's what he wants. That's what he wanted for Eve to be Lord. He wanted for Adam to be Lord. Because he wanted to break up the marriage. (laughs) <laughs> no, because the man and the woman can't be Lord. The husband and the wife can't be Lord. So you've got to decide that. If you're going to get married and do that thing, you've got to make sure that the man knows that he's going to be Lord. As Sarah called Abraham Lord. Not, not as a Lord. Not I'm Lord over you, woman. No, but we know who who the uh, is at the helm. You know, only one can uh, drive the ship, isn't it? Only one can drive the car. Are you in the passenger seat or not? You know what I mean? <laughs> well, you drive it. I think I better drive. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tiger Airlines. They didn't lose much in the uh, Curry V period, only 93 million. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, maternity. Maternity leave. We all know that the women get maternity leave today, but now they've got, they got something for the, uh, the people who, who work and have pets, like cats and dogs and guinea pigs. And now they've got paternity leave. <laughs> that's when <laughs> that's, that's P-A-W Paternity I think it's very P-O-O-R but, um, They got P-A-W Ternity leave Paternity leave For people uh, So they can look after their furry friends If they're fretting The fretting Fretting furry, furry friend <laughs> Paternity Oh, it's a poor world we live in, isn't it? Diana. Lady Diana. Deceased. Uh, I was saying on the news the other night that she... Uh, the, the sons, that would be Harry and William, they have uh, obviously inherited a lot of her charisma. Look. I've seen more charismatic mud crabs at Raglan Creek. <laughs> I have. I've seen more charismatic muddies at Raglan Creek near Rocky there. <laughs> hey? Oh dear, the sheik from Scrubby Creek would laugh his head off. Charismatic. I mean, only, the only thing Diane ever done was whinge and, and look sheepish and shifting. Looking under her eyes all the time. And I'm thinking to myself, oh dear, you wouldn't trust her with 10 cents, would you? Hey? 
He wouldn't trust it with a shilling. I know I wouldn't. <coughs> now they got Mary Jane going cheap, if you want your marijuana cheap, and it relieves depression and pain and replaces it with suicide. No, it <laughs> relieves you from all the depression and the pain and... Uh, but still, Mary Jane, she still can't save. <laughs> Whoops. Mary Jane can't save and can't deliver fully. Amen? I, only Jesus can, because that's what the scriptures say. If the Son, if the Son, not if the Mary Jane, if the Son of God has set you free, you shall be free indeed. Hey? So let's go into the message today. We finished our series and we ended on 113 for the Fear of the Lord series. And um, so we're going into an, just a singular message here today, as far as I know anyway, unless the Lord takes it further, <clears throat> on the 13th of the 2nd, 2022. There's a faith message today. Faith message. Hey, what's faith got to do, got to do with them? What's faith but a mythical emotion? No, it's not. We're going to see what faith is today. So let's open our Bibles and <coughs> the writings of Luke 24. Luke 24, we're going to start in verse 28. What's faith got to do, got to do with them? What's faith but a mythical emotion? No, it, it, faith is not mythical and it's not an emotion. Okay. Luke 24, and we're going to start in verse 28. Then they drew near to the village where they were going and he... <coughs> indicated that he would have gone farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed and broken, gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they knew him. And he vanished from this time. And they said to one another, Did not our, our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up the very hour, that very hour, and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven. And those who were with them gathered together saying the Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon and they told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread and there you have it and as I was reading this the other day uh, I was reflecting on my walk when I started off with the Lord, you know, and, and I started walking with him, like these disciples here, and uh, started talking with him, and it was by phone. You know what I mean? It was by faith that I, I started the walk, and it was by faith that I, I kept walking. And um, he started to open the scriptures to me. And then I started breaking bread, you know, um, at different meetings. And uh, he was revealing himself. He revealing himself to me. And I was getting a revelation. See, they recognised with the breaking of bread, they realised and got a revelation. Hey, this is, this is the Christ, you know, this is the Saviour. And, uh, and then out of nowhere he just vanished. 
And, and sometimes our walk can be like that, you know? And it was like that for me. I never had a pastor. I never had a Bible to start off with. Never had anyone. Uh, once I started moving by faith, because I, because I didn't have a Bible and because I didn't have a pastor and, and I wasn't going to a church, and the Aboriginal brother just led me to the Lord and the Holy Ghost came into my life, I had nothing else... And the Lord made it easy for me in one way that I had to walk by faith. <laughs> I had to walk by the unseen. I had to trust him with all my heart. because, And, and he was the unseen. You know what I mean? Here I am trusting in the unseen. And, and with very little scripture. And very little understanding. And then he just vanished. And, you know, ultimately, um, the Lord wants us to walk by faith. Right? He, he don't want us to walk by sight. So, when I was reading this Dema uh, Emmaus Road uh, event, and I was thinking of my meeting with the Lord and, and talking with the Lord, and, and, and he does so much for us, like, and then he said, now, you, now you're going to walk by faith. And he sort of, it's as if he's vanished. It's as if he's gone from your life. Because you, you're not feeling anything, you know, because the old life is all about feeling, nothing more than feeling. You know, all that emotional stuff, you know. What's faith got to do with it, you know? What's faith got to do with the walk with Jesus, you know? It's, it's just a, a mythical emotion. No, it's not. Uh, faith is, it, it, is an act of your will. Hey? It, it's, not a, it, it's not a feeling. It's not a feeling at all. It, it's a choice to trust in what the Lord's heard. It's the old treasure map set up. You know, and they, someone gives you a, a treasure map and hands it to you and says, "This is where the, the treasure is. There's Ten billion dollars in gold bullion buried here, and are you going to trust in that? Because it's, it's apparently when the treasure map map was opened and he run rolled it and had a look. Man, this is rugged. This is not going to take a half an hour." It'll probably take me all my life. <laughs> It'll probably take me all my life to get to this place that no one has ever been before. Amen? Amen. And no one has ever been where you individually and personally are walking. No one. Not even you. Isn't that amazing? I haven't even been... I haven't been here. I haven't been on the 13th of the 2nd, 2022 before. Amen? Isn't that lovely? What's faith got to do, got to do with it? It's got a lot. What's faith but a mystical, mythical emotion? Faith has got everything to do with your salvation. We know the scriptures one by one, don't we? And if we just go over to uh, Romans. Can we go to Romans? Romans. Chapter 10. Hey? Right. We don't know what the Lord's going to do. My wife had a dream last night. And she said that, you know what, Paul? You were in an auditorium and it was packed to the eyeballs. You're in there printing. In this huge auditorium. I said, oh really? Romans 10. Hey. <coughs> Romans 10. And we're going to go to... Uh, 21. But to Israel he says, 
All day long I have stretched out my hands to a disobedient contrary people. Amen. Not all have believed. Not all have taken fame. And then we go over to verse 22. Better still. We go over to Romans 11.22. Where it says... Um, but we'll, we'll do... Uh, my Bible there is a little bit broken. So I might have to just mosey into this other one here. We go to Romans 11 now, just over the, across the street from Romans 10. We go Romans 11, uh, yeah, 20, better still, 19. Romans 11, 19. You will say then, branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well said, because of unbelief. You see that? What faith got to do, got to do with it? What faith, but I'm missing all emotion. No, it's real. You've got to have it. You've got to have it. You've got to have that faith. Hey? You have to have it. Branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well said, because of unbelief they were broken off. And you stand by. What love got to do? Got to... No, you stand by faith. Not by love. You stand by faith. Because of unbelief they were broken off. And you stand by faith. What faith got to do? They reckon you're saved by grace. They reckon it's once saved, always saved. Well, sir, because of unbelief, they were broken off, and you stand by faith. Do not be haughty, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he may not spare you either. Therefore, consider the goodness and severity of God <coughs> on those who fell. Severity. But toward you, goodness, if you continue in his word. If you continue in his goodness. You see, we, we have to hang on. That's why the Lord gave us, He didn't give us a, an emotion. He didn't give us a myth. This is reality. You know, the Bible to me is more real than people I can see. <laughs> you know that? The Bible, the, the Scriptures more precisely... The scriptures are more real to me than people I can see walking in front of me and looking at me and talking to me. More real. Because I believe in the unseen and not the seen. But one thing that faith does to the word and with the word is make things seen. Make things known. As, he, as it says on the Amazed Road, section as he opened the scriptures to us and, and breaking of the bread you know the breaking of the bread is merely communing so as, as I walked with the Lord in the light of his word what a glory he shed on my way and I'd done his good will and trusted and obeyed and then he started to reveal himself he started to reveal himself to me and I started to know him Amen. Amen. But then, it's just like he disappeared. And I'm thinking, what's this about? I think, oh, hang on. And I only realised, ten years later, <laughs> I only realised ten years later uh, that, uh, hey, he was taking me on a faint walk. But I hung in there all that time. By faint. By that substance, that powerful, so powerful is that substance, you know. If you had faith of a mustard seed, you could say to that tree outside, we've got that big fig tree outside our church here, and that is, you can't put your arms around it. You probably need one, two, three, four people to 
to put arm to arm, uh, hand to hand, stretched out. You could say to that tree, I don't want you there actually, I want you over there at the back of the hall. <laughs> so you have powerful faith is. See, faith, God is not in this quantity thing. He's into quality. Class. Eh? He's into quality. That's why he has this holy remnant. Eh? Fear not, little flock. Whatever your lot. He enters all rooms, the doors being shut. He never forsakes and he never is gone. You can count on his blessing in darkness and dawn. Only believe, only believe. All things are possible. Only believe, only believe, only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. He gave us that substance so we could do exploits. Right? He didn't give us money. He, he doesn't say that. He said, I gave you the substance of faith. Saved by grace through faith. He gives us power, grace, and then he gives us faith so that we can lock into that power and we can become the victorious and we can become those who no longer whinging about being poor in Luke 4, 18. He come to preach the gospel to the poor. Yeah. Hey? You get a, a dozen people together and they have trust in the Lord and faith in the Son of God and they truly do uh, believe they're not going to be walking around saying, looking at their uh, navel saying I'm poor I'm chairman of the poor you know I'm so poor I'm so down because you won't be down <laughs> and you'll just see it your situation as your lot In life, even though you may look across the waters and see a man uh, on the Gold Coast in a lovely big uh, ten uh, car garage mansion with a swimming pool as big as a football field overlooking the sea, 15 storeys high. Elevator inside with servants and personal uh, gym and masseuse and sauna. Amen? Amen. With the best, uh, one of the best uh, chefs to do your breakfast for you after you, your servant has. Awoken you quietly, lest you get angry. <laughs> so as you're walking with the Lord, and he and you're talking with the Lord, and He's unraveling the scriptures to you, and you're going along there and communing and breaking bread. You you really are walking in the invisible, aren't you? You're walking, walking in the spirit. <laughs> and you're not bogged down. You know that he's on another job. If, you know, hypothetically speaking. You know, if, if you're not um, getting the, uh, the immediate uh, uh, response to your request, you know, what's faith got to do with it? They say, what's faith? but a mythical emotion um, when they can't get what they want, when people can't get what they want. But God doesn't want to give you what you want. God wants to give you what he wants. <laughs> and, and that could very well be conflicting. Hey? 
uh, because we're still growing. Uh, we might be glowing, but we're still growing and we're still realizing that, hey, he didn't really want that for me anyway. But he's got something bigger and better down the road. He said, I've got to get this thing, you know, I've got to get this. I, I just want to get it. Well, he'll get down the road and he'll give you that plus. You know what I mean? It might, it might be just a sewing machine, but you get a sewing machine and an overlocker. You with me? He'll just keep, he, he, he'll just laugh and say, hey, you don't go pay on that price. I'll give it to you for chips. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. But then you might have the husband there saying, no, don't, I'm not going to take you there to get that. And, he, <laughs> and you think, no, no, there's something better down the road. I, I know for sure. And then it, uh, by faith, hey, you realise it's not just some mythical emotion. Hey? You start singing about Jesus. He's simply the best. <laughs> He's better than all the gods. Amen? Amen? He's better than my mom and dad. He's better than all of them. He's simply the best. That's Jesus. He's simply the best. And we're not to put him in any other category except the best. So... Romans 11, 22. Therefore consider the goodness and severity of God on those who fell, severity but towards you, goodness. If you continue to have faith, if you continue in his goodness, you've got to have faith to do that. You've got to have faith. I realised, you know, as I was reflecting, as I was looking back, looking back over the years, and the Lord was ministering to me the other day with this message. I'm just sitting there soaking it up and enjoying it. And I'm saying, yeah, Lord, I had nothing else and nowhere else to go. Because he shut every door. And I thought that was pretty mean. But it was a blessing. It turned to be a blessing. It turned around to be a blessing for me. And now, I'm not... Waiting on a feeling to know that God is with me. I know he's with me because he said so. He's made it very clear. They're my brother, my sister and my mother who hear the word of God and do it. Lo, I am with thee always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So he wants us to walk by faith. Even though he, he, did, he vanished in the midst of the disciples there, but he vanished. But we've got to remember he's omnipresent. He's all present. But he, he might have vanished. Amen? And it gets that way as we walk along. You know, some people think, oh, that's only the beginning, and then it all gets good, and, and there's no more... Uh, Times where you think, ah, oh, why have you forsaken me? You know, like Jesus did. <laughs> but Father didn't forsake him at all. He's not like that. Otherwise he'd be a liar. He'd say, I will never, never leave you nor forsake me. Amen? Amen. But it, as you get down the road, you get these seasons where it's just like, wow. You know, what is happening, Lord? Things just feel so like, so empty. It's, it, it's like the tangibility, you know? That's not a word, yes it is, it is now. The tan tangibility, the tangibility, you know? He's not tangible anymore, he's sort of like... But no, he's, he's faith building. He, he, he's not even really faith building. He, he's just uh, given you opportunity to see uh, the faith that he's given you. You know, like the disciple said, increase our faith. The disciple said to Jesus, 
He said, no, no, it's nothing to do with increase. It's about using what you have. And that's what I did when I came to the Lord, because I had nothing and no one. My family weren't saved. They had no idea. They thought, you know, he's lost it now. Well and truly lost it. You know? He's talking to himself in that room. And, but I was praying for them. <laughs> I mean, we know, he, you know he's done the LSD and the, and the, you know, the clear light, three-way trips. And he used to get into mushroom soup, gold top and blue mini mushroom soup. And, uh, you know, doing wheel stands uh, down the street on his motorcycle, off his face. And, uh, you know, drunk eight days a week. Now he's really done it. Now he's gone totally nuts, you know. Now he says he's, he talks with Jesus. So, like, uh, things are getting pretty bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I had nowhere to go. And I didn't know about pastors and uh, all that sort of thing. And, and the Lord didn't have that leading. I used to just go into a church and just sort of sit there and listen to try and find something to listen to. And uh, I thought it was quite miraculous that what I was hearing, I recognised as not being 100% correct. <laughs> Even as a babe, as a babe with a shiny Bible that I bought, gold leaf and all that, you know, feeling like sort of Martin Jackson. With the gold leaf on the Bible there, walking in. You know, white shirt and nice shirt, trousers on. And everyone's sort of looking and going, like, who are you? <laughs> what are you doing here? I thought, oh, I've soon come to realise that my name wasn't Paul, it was Joseph. <laughs> you know, cause I, as one elderly lady said to me, uh, she said that, uh, oh, the Lord, he's given you so much, you know. So uh, what I had to do is I had to make a decision whether I'm going to believe in the seen or the unseen. And that was the scene at the time. Right? And we see the, the disciples going on there and uh, I think it was round about... Mm, 36, wasn't it? Luke 24, 36. Now, as they s said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were terrified. See, terrified now. They're terrified when they see him. Terrified and frightened. And suppose they had seen a spirit. <laughs> and then he said, Look at my hands, you know. But terrified. And the Lord was speaking to me. He said, You know, when people see me on the judgment day, they're going to be terrified. And they're going to be frightened. But he's going to say to his, peace to you. He's going to say to his, come forward, my true and faithful servant. Because he loves people that walk by faith. He loves that. That is pleasing to the Lord. And we must... Uh, Make sure that we do things that are well pleasing to the Lord. Eh? Hebrews, let's go there to Hebrews. <coughs> we go to Hebrews, uh, so eleven chapter eleven. Hebrews. Yeah. What's faith got to do, got to do with it? What's faith but mythical emotion? No, it's not. It's a substance that makes things very clear to us and, and gives us that opportunity to fellowship with the Lord. And... Uh, teaches us not to rely on our feelings. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's 
So, uh, oh, that's a bit strange. been removed from my Bible. <laughs> uh, Hebrews 11, I said, didn't I? Which is the faith chapter. Can't go wrong there. And we go six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. He who comes to God must believe he is, and that he is the reward of those who diligently seek him. We, so that's what faith enables us to do. It enables us to believe that he is, you know, he, that he has got every situation uh, in, under control, no matter how bad it looks. Hey? No matter how bad it looks. No matter how bad things look. He wants us, he said, it, it pleases him. It's impossible to please God. It, without fame. And I've said before, it's a great insult for people not to believe the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 11.1. 1. What are we looking at there? Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Hey? Faith is a substance of things, it's not a, it's not a myth. It's not a, 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 a emotion. It's not a, um, it's not a gold coin. Because all that can be spent, all that can be used up. But faith will keep us all the way. By faith, all the way through the Red Sea. Faith will keep us all the way till we see him again and hear him say, peace to you. All the way. That's what faith enables us to do. Faith enables us, that's why, you know, like to, to, to not backslide. People who backslide lose faith. And when we lose faith... We, if we stay in that place, we're going to lose our salvation. Hey? Well, Paul put it this way to the Corinthians, you'd be disqualified. He told them to examine themselves to see whether they were in the faith. And people with faith are in the faith. People that lose faith are out of the faith. They're not walking in the faith. They're walking by fear and doubt in the flesh. Everyone said, Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. What was that? Hallelujah. Oh, there was one. No. There's something over here. Someone said something over here. I don't know what it was. But let's go again. Anyone said? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's faith got to do? Got to do with this. What's faith but a mythical emotion? No, it's not. It's a substance. Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Hey? I tell you what, we've had some things happen in the house in the last week or so and it wasn't seen, but it happened. Hey? It's a happening place in a happening world. It happened, but it wasn't seen. Hey? Just out of nowhere. Bang. Just out of nowhere. The old Hebrew people were, were just hooking it down the beach there as if they were going for a, um Ironman competition and the Egyptians were behind them in their chariots and with spears and horses and you know uh, draft horses uh, doing 150k you know heading towards them to kill them out of nowhere bang the Lord said oi lift up your stick bang 
and she just peels him back, peels the ocean back, right? What's well, faith got to do with it? Poor. If you didn't have faith, you'd just say, I'll stick this. <laughs> you know what you can do with your stick? But he had faith. See, we got, we got the stick. Abraham passed, I should say, uh, Moses passed the baton. The word gave us the word. He passed that baton. Hey? Right? And now it's. Dun, 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 dun. Chariots of word. (laughs) Chariots of oracles. The fire of the word burning in our bones. We can't hold it back. We have to speak. We have to say something. The brothers uh, went down to uh, church bikers meet down on the Gold Coast yesterday and I tell you what, you know, I couldn't hold it back. I think the whole place got it, me testimony and a booklet, booklet, testimony and a, and a brochure. The moment we had breakfast at the um, outpost down there in Canungra and we got out of the vehicle and then we're just walking along just to sort of turn into the place and they had like uh, tables and chairs in that outside. And there's a bloke sitting there smiling at me, looking at me, saying, oh, how you going? And I just jumped on board and said, oh, yeah, man, it's all good. And I just pulled out a book and said, there you go, brother. Said, okay, yeah. And then we went in, and then, then the literature started flowing. Right? And one guy down there even invited me. He said, hey, you want to go for a run with the angels? I said, the angels? He said, yeah, Hell's Angels. <laughs> Hell's Angels Bike Club. I said, oh. Right. <laughs> okay, I need some special literature there. <laughs> yeah, you want to go for a run with the angels? Yeah, all right. <laughs> and so a lot of different things happen, you know. So many things by faith, by faith. Oh, I, I myself wouldn't go down to uh, a setup like that. But I, I just knew by faith. I knew that the Lord wanted us to go down there. And as we sat and ate the pies that weren't so flat, um, well, you know, the woman there that runs the place asked my opinion. She said, well, how was it, you know? And I'm sort of like, you really want to know? She said, how'd you go? I said, well, the meat was dry and the peas were dry and it was supposed to be a curry pie and I didn't see not even the slightest bit of uh, the yellow submarine. Uh, there was no, you know, didn't taste like curry. But the pastry was good. <laughs> you know what I mean? And she sort of just like, alliance to me, you know, ah. Uh, and that was it. But the outpost was supposed to have the best pies in the country. I know a Vietnam, Vietnamese bakery down in Red Bank there. The pies would kill them. They'd be out for the count. And they're not claiming the best pies in the country. I mean, Yatla claimed the best pies too, but they've gone downhill, hey? Like a Chevy without a brake. So moving right along. I didn't even, even mention the, um, the message uh, title today is Vanish. Vanished. Sometimes we think the Lord's just vanished, hey? But, you know, we, we come across him again down the road. And it's sort of like, whoa, you know? And you're freaking at the freaker's ball, you know? And uh, everything's all right again. Not because of anything else, but he, because you hear him say, peace to you. Hey? And then he... Not that he has to, but he does explain the situation as he did in Luke twenty four thirty eight. And he said to them, this is after they said, it says in 30, 37, Luke 24, they were terrified and frightened. They thought they'd seen a spirit. And then he explains it to them. He said, look, it's like this. Hey? 
And in verse 40, we go jump over to 40 in Luke 24. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet, but while they still did not believe for joy, now they're joyed out. And before they were frightened and everything else. Now they're joyed out and marvelled out. And Mr. Marvel's gone. And, and he said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb. And he took it and ate it in their presence. Amen? And so, you know, there's a celebration time in there. You know, it's the, the broiled fish and the, and the um, honeycombs. It's sweet to trust in Jesus, isn't it? It is so sweet. Hey? The word is so sweet. Uh, so they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb. He took it and he ate it in their presence. See? And then we get back to the... Uh, to, to the um, you know, tangibility again, which is a word now, I've made it a word, but to get back to that tangibility again. But he takes us on that road, doesn't he? he he's always, it, it's like a mountainous walk. It's sort of over hill and dale, and, you know, which is why the prophets speak of that, you know, and, and he'll make me to walk on my high hills, not high hills. You know, we're not, we're not down in, uh, in the parade there in Sydney. Uh, we're walking in the high hills. <laughs> not high hills, hey? Near, near the cross. But, uh, so, <laughs> Habakkuk, uh, Habakkuk uh, was one that said, hey, you know, I, I don't see anything happening here, you know. But he made a decision. And to take faith, didn't he? Hey? Made a decision to take faith. Let the Lord take him up and walk in the high hills. Hey? And lead you, he, and he lead us, lead us into that victory by faith. Not, not, not down to Darlinghurst or anything else, but by faith. In him. That, you know, the world will vanish when we walk by faith. The world will just fade away. The things of the world will become strangely dim in the light of his glory. Hey? In the light of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Where are we? The broiled fish and the honeycomb. I have to try that one. And so, uh, <coughs> yes. Isaiah, can we go over to Isaiah, please? It's about faith, isn't it? Hey? Faith. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Hey? Oh, stop it. Here we are. Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. You see, that's what I'm thinking about yesterday. I'm thinking, gee, the Lord done a great thing yesterday, and he, and he used us, uh, Jesus' brothers, who went down there, and that word that was given out, it's not going to return void, I tell you now. It's going to do a work. That, I'm believing by faith. Because my faith is in what I just read in Isaiah 55, 11. That's the way I go out everywhere, every day, every city, every suburb, every country I've been to and are going to. I stick with that. The word will go out. You long, get the thing out. Get the word out. We're not... Uh, the ones that are going to make all this stuff happen, we just get the word out there. See? I had some LGBTQ, and there was something else on the end too. There was something else, I don't know, EF or something, I don't know. But this guy texted me, and he said, uh, you know, we're not interested in your effing garbage. Don't put it in our box. You know? Um... 
you got a, a church full of pedophiles or something. And I just texted him back and I said, look, we got no LGBTQ here. <laughs> you know? And that's it. Sorry about that. I mean, if you're an LGBTQ supporter, you might not have liked that. But I'm not. I'm totally against it. Because the God I serve says it's damnable and it's deserving fire and brimstone. Amen? Amen. And I'm not going to shrink back for them as the City Point Christian, Christian, question mark, college did. He should have just nailed it and give glory to the Lord and said, no, I'm not moving. I'm only moving out of this college. My belief is the same. I believe what Jesus says, you know, by faith. But what, what's faith got to do with it? What's faith got to do, got to do with it? What's faith, a mythical emotion? Yes. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void. And the words we're reading come from his mouth. The very words we're reading here today come from the mouth of God. Because all scripture is inspired by God. And it's profitable for reproof and instruction and righteousness. Amen? Amen. And it will lead us and guide us to the very gates of pearl and hopefully in, in through each gate. Each gate is made out of a pearl. Okay? Each gate made out of one pearl. Wow, how big is the, the oysters up there? Hey? <laughs> hey? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Hey? I was just thinking, I don't know, some things that pass through my mind in the Lord. Oh. I was just thinking of voice to kill Patrick. I was trying to work out who killed him. But <laughs> the oyster did, it must have been that big. But, uh, yeah, um, so it just vanishes. And our walk can be like that, you know, that we're, it's like Jesus just vanishes. And, and we sort of like, oh, what's going on? But everything's cool. Everything is sweet. Um, Hebrews 11, we go back there. In Hebrews 11, we see a bit of vanishing going on. Here in, in the Hebrews. Hey? Hebrew, Hebrews 11, the verse is, uh, let's say, 24. What's faith got to do, got to do with it? Let's start in 23, sorry. Hebrews eleven twenty three by faith. Moses, when he was born, was hidden three days by his parents. Because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. <clears throat> By fate, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer <clears throat> affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who, who vanished, seeing him who is invisible. You like that? That's, that's how we endure. By seeing the invisible. That's how we endure. And they endured. And then they seen Jesus again, didn't they? Hey? If they would have bailed, they wouldn't have seen Jesus again uh, in the writings of Luke. And they seen him again. They went, wow. They freaked out. And they were afraid. 
and they and they would, you know, up in the air. But the Lord said, "Peace to you." And when the Lord says, "Peace to you," by faith, there'll be peace. When the Lord says, "Peace to you," and He, he said to the waves, I mean the waves, I mean they got better ears uh, and more faith than most so-called Christians. He said to the to the sea when it, it, the sea wheel, billows were rolling and he just said, be still, peace, be still. And, and what did the waves do? They rebelled and they said, no, we're not going to. No, the waves did what the Lord said. Hey, no wonder we named the animals first before the women. No, whoops. I'm oh, sorry about that. Um, so the scripture says he named the animals before the women, didn't he? He created the animals before the woman. Whoa, that's something to think about, isn't it? Whoa, man. Whoa, man. Hebrews eleven twenty three. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden three, three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. So the parents had faith. See, by faith. All this is by faith. It, it's not by intellect or academia ability. or It's not by anything. Money or gold or silver or achievement or medals or, or accolades. Or, it's by faith. And the Lord's made that available to everyone. He came in Luke four eighteen to preach the gospel to the poor and tell them this, to tell the poor, take faith, and you, and you won't be in that position. You 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 won't be so walking around, you know, frowned out. You won't be walking around like that, because you you have the truth and it'll set you free. That this life is only for a moment. Right? This life is fleeting. We, we, we don't know if we've got tomorrow. If God wills, we live tomorrow. Right? He's simply the best. He's simply the best. He's better than all the gods. He's better than mom and dad. He's better than your culture too. Da, da, da. Simply the best. Ah, he's better than all gods. He's better than mom and dad. Oh, better than your grandma too. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I think I better start preaching. <laughs> By faith. By faith. Hey? Sometimes when people have children, it's by faith. <laughs> when they see the child and how it turned out, <laughs> you need faith. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. No. Well, you do need faith, yeah. Oh, look, I'm just burying myself here. Hebrews 11, 24. By faith. Moses didn't wear high heels. <laughs> By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Amen? I tell you what, you need faith to do that. Who wouldn't, want, who wouldn't want to be the son of Pharaoh's daughter? I would. In the world, had all the, she had all the dough. Pharaoh had all the money. He would have gold-encrusted harlings, you know, with diamond pipes. Hey? Buffalo seat and all that sort of thing. Refused. See, 
Faith gives us the strength and the power to refuse. Money can't give you that power. Grandma and Mum and Auntie Bill and, and uh, Uncle Gene, they can't give you that power. Faith gives you that, you know, gives you that lift. So you, you can say, no, I'm sorry, um, Satan, you got the wrong hound. Sorry, Grim Reaper, not today. Uh, the Lord said, he's already set a date. <laughs> Here he is, standing there at the door. The old Grim Reaper, he's standing there at the door there with his hatchet. And you say, oh, by the way, can I just... you got a chip in that thing there. you got a chip there. It'll hinder your beheading. Um, the date's already been set by Jesus when I die. And if God wills, I live tomorrow. Amen? Amen. So, by faith, see? By faith. It's a faith message here today. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. That's a big temptation, isn't it? Abel gives us the power to refuse the temptation of the devil. Hey? Choosing, the next verse, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the diamond crusted and Harley Davidson, uh, rather than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Hey? To enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. There's a lot of enjoyment in going along uh, with the devil in the world. But by faith we can refuse that. Amen? We can say no. And we can walk on in faith in the Son of God. Verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of the world. Then the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. So you have the treasures in Egypt, and then there's this reward. Moses waited up, and the reward is greater than the treasures of the world. The final reward, when he says to you, peace to you, come forward my true and faithful sermon, crown of life, have ye won. Amen? Amen. Peace to you. Peace to you. Come and have some uh, broiled fish and honeycomb. Hey, wouldn't that be lovely? <laughs> they come and have some broiled fish and honeycomb with me. He, look, he, if he real, you know, he knows all things, and, he said, and then he'll say, "It's all gluten free." <laughs> <laughs> he'll have a special area for the gluten free. Going down Hallelujah Avenue in heaven. Oh, glory. It's demon the reproach of the Christ. Greater riches than the treasures. I always see that word Egypt, I think world. For he looked to the, he's looking ahead. See, we're not looking down here at our navel, Wingen. We're looking ahead, as he said in Luke 4 18. Can the priest of gospel to the poor come to heal the brokenhearted? And the word is a, uh, uh, a healing balm, isn't it? The word of God, it's a healing balm on its own. He come to heal the broken heart. He, he, all that in Luke 4.18 is all what he come to do for us. Huh? But we've got to have faith. To believe this gospel. And the preach the gospel to the poor. I told the Filipinos when I was over there, I said, look, I said, you don't need me and you don't need no white man, uh, Canuck. You don't need the white man's dollar. You need faith in the Son of God at the end of the day. At the end of the day, that's what it all comes down to. Do you believe him? 
that he is? Who he says he is? Do you believe that he come to set the captive free? Right? That he came that we may have life and have it abundantly. Whereas the, the world thinks, oh, life is out there. I, 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 I'm not going to lose my life for this Jesus. I have no life. But he, the, the miracle and the mystery is you give up your life and you have no life and you've got more life. You've got abundant life. Because he's simply the best out Better than all the gods. Better than your mom and dad. Better than grandma too. Simply the best. That's Jesus. He's the best. He's the mostest of the toasters. He's the number one. Hey? I don't wear Jesus' name on my jacket because... Uh, uh, of any other reason that, except I love him I'm not ashamed I'm not ashamed of the name of Jesus I want, I want everyone to know I walk around I say oh excuse me i just got to go over here oh, oh excuse me <laughs> I'm just passing through um, hey excuse me I'm just coming back <laughs> did you just come over here <laughs> oh excuse me i just got to come back over here again I'm just going to get the, what's on the menu. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Why? Because I have faith in what? In the name of Jesus. Because at the mention of his name, flowers grow and deserts bloom again. Jesus. Just the mention of your name. Flowers grow and deserts, they bloom again. Just like fire in winter cold. Just like pure precious gold. Jesus, just the mention of your name. The scriptures say that at his name, that, that name Jesus, none of this big onther intereticus that's just passed us by with a, a name 400 foot long, just J-E-S-U-S. -S. Hey, Miriam, Mary, his name's going to be called Jesus. Got it. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. That's the name. That's the name. Master, Saviour, Jesus. At the mention of that name. The mention of it. It doesn't say verbalised. It just says mention it. Every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that he is the Lord of Lords. Right? Glory, glory. So, vanished. That's our message today. And you know the, the Emmaus Road, the word Emmaus means a hot spring. Hot spring. You know, it's sort of like is, I was going to. I was thinking. I'm calling this a uh, jacuzzi uh, message, hot spring. You know, you know how the. It, what is it? A, 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 is it a jacuzzi or jacuzzi? Ja, ja, jacuzzi. <laughs> jacuzzi message, hot spring. Hey, not lukewarm. Hot spring, beautiful and natural. Hot spring. You know out there that God had created for the um, uh, fair traveller, hey? Whitherest thou goest, uh, fair pilgrim, 
<laughs> you know, and there's a hot spring there, natural hot spring, and he goes in there and just sort of contemplates and meditates and uh, ventilates and you know, and that's the Lord just ministering for a while before he moves on. Whether it's thou go as fair traveller. So, let's turn our Bibles to uh, Hebrews 11. And the verse is 27. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured to seeing him who is invisible. You see that it says that he... It says that he uh, forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. So when people flee, usually they're afraid, aren't they? When they forsake something. But he didn't fear the wrath of the king. He was under instruction. As we see and read on. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured it, seeing him who is invisible. See? He was in contact with the vanished one. And he, was, he wasn't into being vanished, so he followed the invisible one. As seeing him who is invisible. Like he was, God was waving him on. Say, come on, let's get out of here. As seeing him who is invisible. You're not going to see that without faith. You're not going to see the invisible. You're not going to touch the untouchable. You're not going to do the undoable. Uh, if that is not a word it is now. We're just not going to do exploits without faith. Right? So, um, yeah, by faith. Forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured. See, there's that word endured again. He endured. That's how I've endured uh, without being surrounded and flanked by uh, man-made Bible college ministers and churches and affiliations. and I've survived by faith in the Son of God. I've endured by faith, as seeing him who is invisible. Amen. Amen. Even though at times it might have been like he's vanished. You haven't left me alone, have you, Lord? You know, you know, here I am in a, in a strange town, preaching on my own, with limited resources, and no connections or contacts or affiliations with anyone of the One World Church. You haven't vanished. It's like you've vanished. You haven't left me, have you? Right? I mean, I've done the Elijah and sat under the broom tree and said, oh, no, you know. But he was there. And he showed me later he was there. When he found a freak out on the freaker's ball. Hey? Talk about freaking at the freaker's ball. And out of nowhere, I was freaking. There was a husband and wife dressed in black. And I thought, no, it's not Johnny Cash. Because I wear black for the beaten down, the lonely. And these two got out of this uh, car and came over to me. I'm in the park. I'm sleeping in the park in my car. And I uh, had a van then. I was sleeping in the van and showering in the tap with the tap in the park. And this husband and wife, dressed in black, came over to me and said, uh, Yahweh told me to uh, come down here and take you home and feed you. And I was just like, eh, me, is this the hot spring happening or what? You know, what's going on here? Hey? I was only going to say, what, what are we eating? Broiled food and honey. <laughs> and they took me home. Uh, to their house and they had the plate the, the, the table set 
And I was dining at the master's table, come and dine. And there was the bacon and eggs and the toast, like a pyramid. It was that high. And there was a roll of money there. And there was a key. And, uh, and there was a VHS video. And they said, there you go, we've got to go and do some things downtown. And I thought, pooey, you know. I, I was fearful in one way and afraid, but then I heard, peace to you. <laughs> peace to you. And uh, they said, oh, the key is to the house. You can come and go as you please. I didn't know these people from Billy. You know what I mean? And uh, when they said, yeah, the VHS is over there, if you want to watch the video, I thought, it's true, what could be on this video? And I just thought, I'll get into this first, and I bowl the bacon and eggs over, and uh, beautiful orange juice, a whole bottle of it, cold and chilled, with a big glass and ice, and I got into that. And these people do work in, uh, in Israel. Anyway, they said, uh, see you later. And I downed it all and put me roll of money in my pocket. I was down to my last dollar. And then I put the video on and blow me away with me take home pay. It was a video of a young uh, missionary bloke going to an Asian country and meeting a young lady and marrying her. And that was, uh, I don't know how many years before I went to the Philippines and met Sister Jovi. <laughs> so um, it's faith, isn't it? It's faith. It, it's by faith. And the things that happened uh, with these, uh, this couple and me, and, and, uh, fellowship-wise, and that were just incredible. Absolutely incredible. So uh, you, you just can't get that sort of um, adventure um, with religion. It's by faith. As we see, and, and in your own time, read Hebrews 11. Read the whole chapter. You know, get the Bible on your phone. It takes about two seconds. You know, people put apps on their phone every minute of the day. Put the New King James Bible app on, bang. A and you got it there. And you can just, any time of the day you can, as the Lord leads, you just go there, oh, he's leading me into Hebrews. And you read Hebrews 11 and see what they've done by faith. <coughs> and that's how this ministry is still standing today, by faith. Not by wealthy businessmen who are controlling the whole thing because they built a building and now they're controlling the minister and controlling everything else. No, it stands, this ministry stands by faith in the Son of God. And we ain't got no plan because no servant has a plan and no prisoner has a plan only to escape. But I'm a willful prisoner of the Christ Amen. and I just love walking by faith. After 35 years this June, I love the mystery of it. I, I, I love the, the excitement of it. What's going to happen tomorrow? You know? It's now or never. Come, all oh, says the Lord. You know? We just don't know what tomorrow holds. Let's seize the moment and run with it in the Lord and you'll see his glory. As he said to Martha, Martha, I said to you, if you'll only believe, you'll see my glory. <laughs> Just like that lawyer, a barrister in the Philippines, when, when I, I walked out of that mission, they were very, uh, what would you say, rude people. I got tired of casting my pearls before pigs and giving what's holy to dogs. And the Lord had a barrister a well-respected barrister in that village to go, Hoi, Joe! You know? Over here. 
I don't know him from Jack. Hey? Come here, what's going on? I said, oh, just at the moment I'm looking for somewhere to stay. You can stay here. Here, let me make you a coffee. Oh, don't drink coffee, tea. Okay, he got the servant to go down and get tea. He said, go down and get the tea bags <laughs> for, the, for Joe. Because Filipinos call every white man Joe. They say, hey, Joe. A bit of Lou Reed there. But um, faith, that's our message today, vanished. It was like it just, at times it just feels that way. But faith enables us to endure. And we get to that next mountain peak. We're going through that valley. And we're going up. And we get to that mountain peak. And then we hear, peace to you. Huh? Then we hear, come on over here, have some broiled fish and some honeycomb. You won't need high hills. You, you can walk on the high hills with me. Right? Isn't that wonderful? That's where the, the prophet Habakkuk said, the fig tree's not blossoming, the fruit's not on the vine, the flock's cut, cut off from the fold, there's no herd in the storm, the product of the olive has fallen, everything, the, there's no steak on the plate. It, hey? What's going on? He said, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. No matter how it looks, you have to hang in there and say, right, I'm going on your word, Lord. You said you'd never leave me. And you said you'd never forsake me. And I believe you. And I believe you have something bigger and better down the road. I believe you've got something more exciting for me tomorrow. Hey? And there you go. The Lord shows you as you go down the road. But we've got to stay on that narrow road. We can't get off. There's nothing on the wide road. There's nothing to the left and the right. Only pumas going, wow, wow, trying to put fear into you. But you just keep going. You go straight through the middle of the pumas. Wow, wow, wow. They're on each side. And you're just walking straight through the middle, trusting in the Lord with all your heart, leaning not on your own understanding, acknowledging the Lord in all your ways, and He'll set your path straight. Oh, hallelujah. Hey? Isn't that wonderful? Amen. What the Lord does? And then, of course, uh, yeah, we've got to remember that Jesus is not coming back as a baby to judge. We won't have a baby in the straw judging us, going goo goo ga ga. It's going to be uh, frightening. You're going to, we're going to face these eyes of fire and a face like lightning. Amen? As it says in, in, in Luke there, they were terrified. Hey? Terrified and frightened. And they, they thought they'd seen a spirit. Well, the, the Lord will be in the spirit and we'll be in the spirit and we'll be in the spiritual on the judgment day. Hey, we won't have a mortal body. Hey? Paul the Apostle said to the Corinthians, knowing the terror of the Lord, I persuade men and women to take faith in the Son of God. To believe him and walk in the victory that he's already provided for you. He wants to fellowship with you. He wants to walk with you. He wants to unravel the scriptures to you. Okay? He wants to, to build you into that person as the potter would redo that pot so that it's to heavenly standard. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to give all the glory to Jesus today and walk in the victory this week. Eh? Thank you, Jesus.